As far as I recall, we had a very long history. It started way back in 1970s. And back then, it was only a part-time nurse, half-time in fact, sitting in our microbiology laboratory in pathology. But, uh, you know, as time goes on, there was a recognition that the, there's a need for a more formal program. So there are more infection control nurses who were then appointed to the respective hospitals. But it began in 1970s, back then. Well, those bugs are smart. <laughs> And um, we could never really quite predict what's going to happen next. And so as microbiologists, I would say it's fascinating to see new organisms emerging all the time. It poses a challenge to us. But as an infection control professional, I would say it, it works. Uh, it has its pros and cons. From what I've seen through the SARS and even H1N1, you know, it really brought the recognition of infection prevention and control in the world. And for the first time, you know, people wake up and realize its importance. And so we were given formal support from leadership onwards and even from the Ministry of Health. So that's where, you know, people recognize that you do need an infrastructure with trained personnel. And secondly, you do need healthcare workers in the organization to know what is infection control. And so I'm glad that since then, since 2003, we had orientation in infection prevention control as mandatory for all new hires. So that's good, but then it's the ongoing program of keeping them updated and so forth. So, so that helps in ensuring that our workforce is uh, knowledgeable and competent in inf basic infection control practices. And thirdly, I would say it, it really helps us in the sense that uh, we learn to recognize that we need to set aside isolation rooms a specific kind of ratio or number for respective institutions because we need them in times of crisis and so forth. So we had the opportunity of upgrading and ensuring that we have the capacity to cope for future outbreaks. And the next point I would say is that um, it's the readiness factor. You know, we'll never know when's the next outbreak. So this is where it makes sense for the infection prevention control program to be robust, you know, to be updated what's going on and to have an ongoing kind of a program of vigilance and readiness. Well, first of the community, I would say that as a nation, Singapore has done well in making sure we are prepared. We have not left since SARS. We've got the latest updates and making sure our guidelines are up to date and ensuring not just the healthcare sector, but every sector is familiar with the codes, with the respective PPE, how they use it and so forth. So resources were ploughed in for that. So that's good for us. As an institution in, in, in healthcare, uh, I, I would say that for us, especially in Sing, Sing Health, we've also had this task force since 2003. And we've never stopped working since then. We've been meeting regularly, quarterly, you know, to review our plans practice, exercise, and making sure how we can be better each time. So that's how we keep ourselves ready. I must say nobody really knows. I wish we can predict, you know, otherwise, you know, you know it would be great if we can predict, then we'll know how to prepare. But the very fact that we can't predict, I would say this is where it becomes so important for us, infection prevention and control professionals to do our work well and to help our colleagues and everyone to be ready. I would say the biggest threat would be still the viruses, you know, compared to the uh, bacteria. Because for bacteria, usually you would have antimicrobial agents to kind of treat, although we know we have lots of MDROs and we're running dry. But the viruses, well, they're just amazing and it's just so difficult, you know, and we've had our fair share of outbreaks in the past whether it's the pandemic flu, the SARS, the mers and even Ebola. And they're all viruses, so we will have to be prepared for a new virus perhaps or, uh, you know, an, or an evolving virus that's changing. Okay, my comment is that infectious diseases in Singapore has really grown through the years and I'm really glad to see that. And it's an important field where we can uh, you know, ensure that we have 
good diagnosis, prompt diagnosis and therapy for our patients. But infection prevention and, and control is also an important field and this is where a, I would like to see that we continue to work together in partnership with the ID folks and together we can really have a better and safer environment for our patients.